trying to get observations to do better than this, coming up on Machine Learning Basics. If you're getting something useful out of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button. If you're getting something useful out of a couple of them, go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you are regularly getting valuable content that's helping you out, I encourage you to join our family over at patreon.com. This video, I'd like to welcome SK413025 and Sora Shul to our Patreon family. Thank you so much for joining us. You really do help make this show possible. So, I would like to present to begin with our objective. This is what we would like to train. We have solved this problem in a very efficient manner. It moves very decisively. It moves towards the target and it moves in a smooth and, and natural way, right? It's not just doing like straight angles or something like, so this is a solved problem. This looks beautiful and this is absolutely wonderful and is totally not at all done using uh, observations. This is a vector observation based. It had no visual input whatsoever when I trained this, unfortunately. And this was in fact trained in one and a half million steps while my son and I went out to dinner, we played a quick game. And then this is what came out of it. So this is our objective. This is uh, ultimately what we would like to do. However, we would prefer to do it without any raw vector observations. We would prefer to do it just with visual observations. Now, uh, why might you want to do this? Well, it's, it's kind of like there's a, a holy grail of machine learning or if you can just provide a visual problem like this, you know, for reinforcement learning, that it can just go learn it, right? You don't have to collect observations. You don't have to think about your problem that much. And it will just pick it up and kind of figure it out. And there are organizations uh, who have made some progress in this regard. You know, they talk about like Google's DeepMind, right? Um, now, I will mention, and this is very important, and it's going to be a running theme, uh, some of the names when you start talking about this level of compute required, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook um, are four organizations that I can think of that are throwing this kind of compute behind it, which is telling you something pretty darn important. So <clears throat> we are going to compare this with our best of breed. So best of breed observation based version is this guy right here. So this is version 16 and it's, uh, nope, nope, he missed. All right, and it's going along. It's not nearly as quick, it's not nearly as decisive. It is, however, picking a course and trying to correct and go, yeah, maybe not, well, no, no, not quite. Um, so it's better than nothing, right? And it's certainly not just doing, going off blindly. And when I first started doing this, I was keeping a log, right? I had recorded a bunch of videos, and after each one, after each attempt, um, I was going to stop and say a little snippet and do something. Um, this is version 16, so I stopped doing that. I got sick of doing that, especially uh, when some were game tweaks, right? So I realized that if it goes off the map, um, it can't see anything, and therefore none of the rest of the training has any point to it at all. So I said, all right, if it goes off the map, that's end of game, get a big penalty. Um, and then I also adjusted for, instead of distance to the target, progress towards the target. It's a little philosophical difference that made a big difference in training. So I did not fully train this as far as I possibly could. The reason being is it has taken me basically all summer to get this far. This little guy going along and approximately, you know, you can see how it's actually trying to start to solve the problem. This is at 50 million iterations, right? So it has taken 50 million times playing this game to be able to get to the point where it still occasionally just runs off the map. Um, but, you know, it tries-ish uh, and then sometimes succeeds and sometimes does not. 
Um, but again, you can at least see that it's doing something and um, is occasionally successful. Um, and again, 50 million iterations with observations compared to one and a half million iterations. Also, one of the things that I want to point out is that when you're doing vector observations, uh, in this case, I'm passing in six floats. That's it. That's my entire input, uh, as opposed to an 84 by 84 RGB array, which is a much larger space. Now, this means that you can have far more information in that space, which is why it is so much more computationally intensive. But it also means that for that 50 million iterations, it took a lot more time just to move those bits around. Um, how much more time? Well, again, I said the one and a half million iterations for the fast, easy one that we have done, one and a half hours. The 50 million iterations took me 20 days worth of training to be able to get to 50 million iterations. Um, and then I finally, uh, at the 50 million mark, I was getting ready to do another batch to see how it was gonna go. And I accidentally forgot to use the load command, didn't catch it right away, and then it wrote over my save point. Um, at which point I said, you know what? I am, I am done, I am good enough. This has been, I kid you not, 20 days <laughs> um, of work. Now, this is uh, 20 days of not constant compute time because I did do them in batches, so there was some downtime uh, between batches, but it's uh, really, really a significant amount of computation. Actually, I think it has cut those out. Yeah, so this is um, July 3rd. Oh, no, that was the... That was my mistake. Um, yeah, no, yeah, July 3rd, yeah, right before the 4th of July to July 24th. Um, yeah, so 20 days to go over this entire thing. Um, and then I goofed. But again, I was at this point fairly happy with where I'd gotten. Now, as you can see with this level of smoothing, I could have kept training. It would have continued to learn. We did not hit a maximum value on here. It could have kept going for quite some time. I will compare that to the one where we just did normal vector observations. You can see this puppy's kind of flattened out, right? It's not going to do any more training. So there was more room for it to go, but the problem was at the rate that we were going, it would have been hundreds of millions of iterations before the vector observation was able to get close to, I'm sorry, the visible observation was able to perform anything like the vector observation. So where does that leave me? Um, there are a few cases where visual observations really make sense. When the program that you're trying to learn is a black box and you don't have a view onto the inside, uh, that's one. Two, uh, you have gobs of money and compute resources available because um, you know while this was going on you know for some of this I was honestly on vacation I just said hey go run you know 10 million iterations and I'll see you after vacation and that was like the first 10 million iterations and it had just started getting here um, so people that have a lot of money to throw a compute and that's for a couple of reasons one is uh, because it's going to monopolize any single given machine, and so you need a couple of machines. The other one is you do want to be able to do this in parallel better because if you make a mistake, right, you might not know. It took this thing to cross over the zero line, right, the first eight, at eight million is where it first started really crossing the zero line and learning to win as opposed to crash and burn. That is a lot of iterations, right? That's three days into this thing is how long it took for it to improve. And so, you know, the first couple iterations, all right, I didn't have the barriers on the edge that says, you know, if you leave the playing arena, you're dead. And so there were millions and millions of iterations before I learned that and then refined my algorithm and try it again. So every bug costs you in days as opposed to minutes or hours. 
Um, so, you know, on one hand, there's just a phenomenal amount of compute required, you know, overall to do it right. But all of the times, all of the attempts learning how to do it right up until then also cost orders of magnitude more effort um, and compute time. So it's really, really a challenge, and um, it makes very hard to recommend this. Again, unless you don't have insight into it, or if this really is an area of very specific research for you. I will say I have seen research papers. Again, I think it was a, a Google DeepMind paper. I was sitting in a, a uh, machine learning club at work because we are a giant basket of nerds. And uh, I remember they had you know, one of the diagrams up and I realized on the x-axis it started, it had this kind of improvement, right? It had the first real signs of improvement at two billion iterations, right? And so to me, I thought my first reaction to that is, wow, that takes a lot of faith to just let that run for two billion iterations. And part of it is because these are professionals so that's what they do for a living and that is all that they focus on and they, one, do have a lot of faith, and two, they're doing more than just that at one time. They can have some long-running experiments on some machines as they use other machines because they have a huge amount of resources available to them. Um, I've been talking about, you know, am I going to get a new computer, these new AMD processors out? Uh, they do look pretty sharp. I'm pretty excited. Um, they have one right now for, I think it's like $550. That is 12-core, uh, 24 thread, I think it is. Um, I might wait until, I think it was September, because that's not too far away, uh, for the 3950X, which is going to have even more threads. It is going to be more expensive, but I do use my computers, um, you know, a, a significant amount. I have a 6700K, so my current CPU is uh, three and a half-ish years old. So I, I do make use of them. I don't just upgrade willy-nilly, you know, every couple of months, so the occasional three-year purchase to buy good equipment that I'm confident I'm going to use may make sense in this case. Um, so I do want to do some comparisons to see how it does with more cores on a CPU that's really designed for that um, because I think that's going to be very interesting, very telling uh, because that will improve things. Now, that would be fantastic for this guy, right? And again, hour and a half, one and a half million iterations solve the problem. Right, as opposed to even this, right, even this super long running process. I mean, it's ridiculous how how long 50 million iterations is. You know, even if I could make that four times faster, you know, that's still down in this range. I mean, we're still talking days. You know, four or five days to get a result um, on on a CPU that can handle that kind of multi-core. And again, early attempts of the multi-core processing didn't show huge gains. Um, in fact, in a couple cases, they were detrimental because the computer was task switching. Um, so, you know, for this to be viable, you know, it would have to be probably a hundred times faster than it is right now uh, for me to really approach this for various things. Again, there are cases where it makes sense to try to do this kind of learning. There are people that that is their research area and they do go out and they get a lot of compute resources and they have shortcuts and maybe there's some things I missed. If you're looking at this, if you're one of these experts that does this kind of observation, you know, visual observation based machine learning and you're, and you're like, Blake, you missed this blah, 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 you fool. Um, please let me know. I am always willing and open to learning and sharing that back out to people. Uh, but from what I'm seeing, Right, we're, and it, again, it's kind of unsurprising, right? There's, you know, an order, a couple of orders of magnitude more data. It makes the problem that much harder to figure out because the game has to uh, understand the relationship between these objects and how they relate, and it has to induce all of that as opposed to me giving it just six numbers and saying, here, here's the information you need to solve the problem. So, all of that said, I am going to be stepping away from visual observations. I feel like I've gone into it, I've explored it, I've seen where there are some benefits. Uh, the drawbacks 
vastly outweigh the benefits for any of the use cases for you know an indie developer like myself or anybody just getting started in this kind of area. It is an extraordinarily difficult task taking a huge amount of compute. Um, so we're going to step away from it and probably go explore other problem types. So uh, if there is something that you would like me to explore, please feel free to comment below or also my patron, patrons over at Patreon can go ahead and uh, open up a message and shoot me a message on Patreon and we can talk about the kinds of things that we would like to approach for this kind of machine learning. So thank you all for tuning in. Questions, comments, I'm always here for you. If you're getting something useful out of these videos, like, subscribe, or uh, be like SK413025 and Sarshul and join us over on Patreon. Thank you so much for joining us. Good luck and happy learning.